Hi everybody, welcome back to Carter Dave, where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. Today I have a special video for you because in this live recorded presentation, I explain all the characteristics of GitHub packages, and I also cover the differences between GitHub packages and the um, GitHub container registry. As I mentioned, it's a live recorded presentation, so it's more a general conversation about the topic. Um, before we start, make sure to like this video if you find it insightful or helpful so more viewers can benefit from it. And if you are into those kind of topics, feel free to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. But without further ado, let's jump into the content. Let's start with what is GitHub Packages? Well, GitHub Packages is basically a centralized package repository for all the package dependencies you may have. Uh, we support currently NPM, NuGet, Maven, Grail, RubyGems, and Docker inside GitHub Packages. And they are uh, basically scoped per repo. Um, so one question I normally have is, why should I use you know, the package uh, or why should I save a package inside GitHub Packages rather than uh, save it in uh, you know, the public NPM or the public NuGet server? Well, of course, it's for two reasons. First one is if you don't want to make your, um, your package public, you may consider using GitHub packages because if your repo is private, you can have the GitHub package for that repo private. And second is also for, uh, for speed and performances. Having the packages inside uh, the same infrastructure means that whenever you need to use those packages, it will be much easier and much faster to retrieve them rather than grabbing them from um, uh, third-party infrastructure, for example. But mainly is to ensure that your dependencies, especially the dependencies that you created, so you created your own NPM package, your own Gradle package, and so on and so forth, are available and secured within your infrastructure to be able to be used inside uh, your projects. This is just one of the examples using NPM. You can, uh, of course, public the NPM package directly from GitHub to GitHub packages from the user repo. And GitHub adds all the metadata to it. And to you to do the, so, it uses directly the readme that you have in your repository to add some sort of description and general details to your package. And the, it does that not only for NPM, of course, but for all the um, supported repository and package type. Same thing with uh, Docker, you can publish the Docker image directly from within GitHub using GitHub Actions uh, to Docker, sorry, to um, GitHub packages. And we don't only support, of course, Docker, but we support only uh, also the um, OCI. And you can use any Docker action. We have the, the official Docker action that allows you to build them, push a Docker image, and you can target GitHub packages, or you can even use directly the uh, Docker command line to publish to GitHub packages. And basically it will be the same that you use for publishing to Docker Hub. You just uh, use the GitHub packages as target environment for your push. If you've followed the latest announcement, we have now another way to store containers in GitHub, which is even better than GitHub packages. Uh, because GitHub packages is more for software packages, uh, especially for your own dependencies. And you can use that to, you know, to, to save your packages either privately or publicly, depending, depending on the um, availability of your repo. And of course, use those packages, as I said, as dependencies. And you can store Docker, Docker images in there. I would say the recommended approach is using the GitHub container registry instead, because it's purposely designed for container images. And what that means is that, first of all, it's not scoped um, as repo, but is scoped as uh, you know, organization or you know, owner. Like in my case, I would have a Docker, uh, sorry, a GitHub container registry for all, the, all my repos. If you use it inside an organization with a client, they will be able to use that from within the whole organization. And you have a much more fine-grained permission system for that. So it's not just private, public, and everyone having access to that repo has access to packages. For the GitHub container registry, it's much more fine-grained. 
Um, and of course, as I mentioned, the visibility is now separate from the repo visibility. For example, you may have a public repo, but then keep the GitHub container registry private, even though maybe it's hosting an image from that repo or vice versa. You may have a, a private repo that is generating your image, but, uh, pushing it to the GitHub container registry and have that image publicly available in there. One thing I haven't mentioned is that so far, at least on the GitHub packages, we don't support a generic type of package. So if you need to do that, uh, we do have, for example, the uh, GitHub release that is more a generic store, if you will, in which you can save, you know, whatever kind of file you want. Um, but that's, of course, public. So again, if it's if your repo is public, that will be public. But if you want to use the GitHub packages for generic or for what is called universal packages, that's that's not that's not currently supported. And another thing I forgot to mention when talking about the GitHub container registry is that of course you can use that as a normal container registry, meaning that you can use them to host your images then that you can deploy anywhere else. As long as you have a personal access token or a user that can access that container registry um, outside of your organization, then you can configure that in your permissions. Then you can use that credential to um, you know, deploy to your Kubernetes in, in Azure or your you know, ECS on Amazon and, and whatnot. So that can be used uh, like, yeah, like you would do for Docker Hub. 